Hey everybody, welcome back to Venom Central. Gonna do a little short video today. Talk a little bit about eyelash vipers. I know they're a very popular snake in the venomous hobby right now. And I keep several myself. And I'm just gonna give you some basic tips and pointers on eyelash viper care. I would feed this guy for you today, but he was just fed not too long ago. Let me unlock his cage. Get a better view of him. Okay. And this is my male. If it had come into focus. And he's a yellow. I think he's a little pissed off because I pulled his females out of here the other day. But I want you all to see how I keep my eyelash vipers. This is actually an old gun cabinet that I converted into an arboreal cage. And it's kind of sealed it up with some waterproof paint, latex of course. Decorated it up with some nice vines and limbs and fake plants and things like that and actually this cage is large enough to house several eyelash vipers which i keep several in there at a time but right now i got the lone male in there now heating everybody's always concerned about heating eyelash vipers and everybody's under the conception that well they're from the jungle they like it hot and humid and you can see i keep my guys at about 80 81 degrees now that's on the warm end. That's up top. See, and I prefer these long, skinny arboreal cages just because of this factor. It's probably four to five degrees warmer up top here than it is down in the bottom of this cage. This way the snake has an opportunity to choose where it wants to be and what temperature it wants to be at. As you can see, this adult male, he's tucked up there in the shade, and he's midway. Let me grab a heat gun here, and I can show you the heat variance. As you can see up top here, it's at 82 degrees. And then down here in the bottom... It's 77. So he's got a pretty good gradual change here. I mean, he can get cooler. He can get warmer. He can choose where he wants to be. They seem to do better like that. And believe it or not, they kind of like it a little bit cooler. Humidity. <clears throat> I missed them probably two to three times a week just to keep that humidity, you know, at around... 60 to 70 percent and just a fine mist then to keep this cage nice and humid and there he goes we pissed him off he's on the move <laughs> and ventilation is important also see i don't believe in drilling a bunch of little holes i actually put vents in my cages so they get a nice cross ventilation down low and up high. And another little trick that I also do with my lighting on all of my cages is I'll hook them to a dimmer. See, I can make them brighter, which we create more heat. I can also dim them down and make less heat. Of course, everything's run on a timer. Right now it's 12 on, 12 off. You can see our, our little guy here is on the move. I missed him and just spooked him, so he's going to go to ground. <clears throat> A lot of people ask me, they say, man, I've got eyelash vipers, but they just won't seem to get up into the branches. And a lot of times it's because it's too hot up in the branches. You know, they like it cooler. Everybody's under the misconception, you know, they come from the jungle. They're, you know, hot and steamy. Under the jungle canopy is actually kind of quite cool and moist. And these guys are normally found in a wet environment. 
very thick, dense vegetation, and it's cooler. So keep your eyelash viper somewhere between 78 and 82 degrees, and they'll thrive. Feeding. I feed my eyelash viper probably only once a month. That's it. I mean, juveniles and babies, you know, you can you can throw them more food. I mean, you, you can get them, a, you know, maybe a, a pinky, you know, once a week, every other week. But when my snakes reach adulthood, I lean them down, man. I don't let them get that big fat content in their body. It's no good for them. I'll feed them maybe, you know, an adult mouse, maybe once a month. That's all they really need. They're basically a lazy snake. They stay in one position for months on end and wait for prey to come to them. So, you're better off less feeding, less heat, and they tend to do a little bit better. Let me see if I can get this guy up in the lights so you can get a better look at him. I don't like to molest him a whole bunch and screw with him. <laughs> Now that's an adult male. Adult males will get about maybe 20 inches, maybe a little bit bigger. They don't get real big. The females, on the other hand, will get so big that they'll dwarf these males. A lot of your Bothrop species do that. Bothrop's Asper, the males are tiny. The females are nine-foot monsters, you know, so. But anyways, hope you all learned a little something. Just want to share a little bit of knowledge with y'all about keeping arboreals and how I do it. It works well for me. I'm not saying that is the perfect way or the exact right way, but that's how I've been doing it, and it's been working well for me for years. And I'm sorry about the low grade video. I'm kind of doing this on my phone right now. My camera's screwed up. And once again, everything stays locked up. There we go. Locked down tight. Don't be afraid to go big with your cage. Five, six feet tall, two, three foot wide. They don't need a lot of width. They just need somewhere to climb. Anyways, I'll get back with y'all at a later date when we feed some animals. And We'll do another session here pretty soon. Checking out. This is Venom Central. Later.